Today I would like to talk about uh, ICT4E, the backstory. Uh, ICT4E meaning Information Communications Technology for Education. And this is the backstory, a sort of a, a backgrounder of uh, other sessions that would follow on ICT4E policy and standards. Now, uh, the ICT4E discourse is actually based or it's an offshoot of a larger discourse on the information society. Now, uh, many of us think that this discourse started very recently, maybe around 10 or 15 or 20 years ago, but actually uh, the information society traces its roots in uh, economics actually uh, during the 30s, you know, post-depression 30s, uh, we could trace it to uh, three Austrian economists. Uh, Friedrich Hayek was the first one. If you Google his name, uh, you will be uh, provided with a link which leads to this information that he is born in Austria-Hungary as Friedrich August von Hayek and uh, he's frequently referred to as F.A. Hayek, uh, an Austrian economist and philosopher best known for his defense of classical liberalism. But actually he was the person who introduced knowledge economics to uh, uh, the discipline, the economics discipline. Now. Uh, Again, the backgrounder, uh, consider Germany uh, during the Depression. It just, uh, it was uh, being humiliated by the Allies since it lost during the Second World War. And um, it had to pay uh, outrageous uh, reparations to uh, the Allied countries. But then, just prior to the war, it became one of the top 10 economies. Now, how did that happen? Well, was it because of uh, economic policies of Hitler? No, uh, this fellow, uh, Friedrich Hayek, uh, submitted that it was because of science and technology, it was because of knowledge that uh, Germany earned its place in uh, uh, well, in, in, uh, as one of the major economies in the world. And one of his uh, associates, Schumpeters, also from Austria, you know, another one of his associates, or uh, actually students, is a person by the name of Fritz Maclop. Now, Fritz Maclop emigrated to the United States and at the United States, knowledge economics began to be referred to as information economics. Now, he was the person who introduced the trichotomy of uh, the agricultural uh, society, the industrial society, the information society. The term information society actually came from him, but it was one of his students, Mark Porat, uh, whose 1976 dissertation, uh, a 20 volume dissertation, described uh, information, uh, the information economy of the US. During Porat's time, uh, uh, he talked about uh, information economics, information based economies, industrial based economies, agricultural based economies. Okay. Now, how is this related? this concept of information society, how is this related to uh, ICT4E? Well, as I said, uh, the ICT4E discourse is an offshoot of this larger uh, discourse called information society. What makes a society an information society? What makes a country an information-based uh, economy? Well, uh, according to Borat, uh, if the larger number of your workforce are information workers, then 
uh, your country is an information-based economy. It's an information society. Uh, if, your, uh, if the larger portion of your uh, workforce are agricultural workers or farmers, then your country is an agricultural society. Okay? Now, uh, is the Philippines an information society? Well, that just happened to be the subject of my dissertation in 1983. Then I found, of course, given uh, secondary data, as well as uh, other sources that the Philippines is an agricultural society. But in 2007, somehow our classification was changed you know, from uh, an agricultural to an industrial to an information society. That is because uh, our overseas uh, Filipino workers were classified as, were classified as service workers. Uh, many of them were uh, put into the category of information uh, workers for one reason or another. Now again, uh, what is, uh, what makes us an information society? I will show you a graph. Now this graph is uh, called uh, the volatility index, the CBOD, uh, or OE volatility index, CB. OE meaning uh, the Chicago Board of uh, Economics, if I'm not mistaken. Now, this uh, graph shows uh, times when volatility is very high volatility, meaning uh, markets, economic markets tend to sell, okay, to sell. People have lost trust in their stocks, so they sell their stocks, okay. In this graph, you would see peaks uh, in 1987 and 2007 or 2008. Now, a large part of that peaking up was due to media coverage of uh, this uh, behavior in the stock market. In 2007, if you're not uh, too young to remember, People watched as their uh, people watched CNN or ANC while their, the value of their stocks fell, and as this was being covered by media, they started selling, selling, selling. So this is uh, you know uh, uh, the influence of information and communication in our economy. Another example, a more recent one, in 15 September 2016. Uh, I was on my way to uh, Los Baños along EDSA. I was caught in EDSA traffic. And so I switched on the radio. This was uh, at around 10 a.m. And lo and behold, the voice that I heard was the voice of uh, Laila de Lima and Edgar Matobato. Okay? Uh, and uh, the, the, the resource person, it was a Senate hearing, the resource person was giving out details of uh, heinous uh, crimes in Davao. And at that time, I was checking the Philippine Stock Exchange Index on my phone, okay? So this is uh, a picture of the Philippine Stock Exchange Index at 10 to 10.30, okay, 10 to 10.30. Now at around 10, the witness was giving his testimony, and at that time, the PSE Index dropped drastically. Okay, now at around 10.30, he was interpolated by Senator Tito Soto. And at that time, when uh, Tito Soto started putting or uh, uh, was punching holes into his testimonies, it was the, the stock uh, index was uh, going higher. You know? it, it went a bit higher. And then the Lima uh, interjected and uh, served as a lawyer <laughs> to the witness. Again, it went down. Now, immediately after that, I, I got home, I, I watched TV, and then also monitored the PSE index on my phone. And this is the image that I got, okay? Now, if you look closely, the ebbs and flows, uh, the speaking and diving of our index coincides with uh, interpolations of Senator Sani Angara and uh, Senator uh, uh, Cayetano, actually ending with uh, Cayetano's interpolation after his uh, 
um, after his uh, questioning the witness, the index was at the same level as it was before 10. So you, you could just imagine how uh, coverage, uh, how media coverage, how information and communication could actually dictate you know, uh, the value of your stocks. This, such is an information society. How is this relevant to us in uh, the education sector? Now, one of the foundations, one of the uh, found or uh, the basic assumptions of the information society discourse is that information is a commodity that has value. It should be factored into our economic equations. Uh, information uh, is something uh, that can be sold or bought. Counterpoint to that is the open access movement. Now what you see is uh, the universal symbol for open access. How does it look like? It looks like a, a padlock, doesn't it? Okay, an open padlock with an O in uh, the middle and an A. So that's uh, for open access. Open access uh, submits that information is free, knowledge is free. Okay, uh, it should be accessible to all uh, its users. Now, along that uh, comes the open educational resources. Along uh, the same line, uh, this is what is known as the Creative Commons stamp, okay? Uh, the universal symbol for Creative Commons. If you have copyright, then you would have copyleft. Within the Information uh, Society discourse uh, is uh, the concept of uh, yeah, openness uh, in sharing uh, knowledge. And what you see now is the uh, coat of arms of uh, the Open University, which refers to the UK Open University. Okay? Uh, note that its motto is learn and live. In 2011, uh, a ranking was made uh, to determine the top 10 research universities at the UK. And according to Sir John Daniel, uh, the UK Open University was fifth in that rank. Number one was Cambridge. Uh, number three was the London School of Economics. Uh, the fifth was uh, the UK Open University. It, it outranked even Oxford, which was number six. Okay. Uh, and this Open University, actually it's becoming a, a trend. Uh, what you see is the seal of the University of Michigan. The University of Michigan, like the University of the Philippines, has its Open University, okay? And they call their Open University Open Michigan, okay? So perhaps we should call ourselves Open Philippines or Open UP. Uh, there is also this Nottingham University has its open Nottingham. Uh, okay. Now these trends are all offshoots of an information society. You must have heard of the concept of mega universities. A mega university is a university with uh, a minimum of 100,000 actively enrolled students. Okay. This term was again coined by Sir John Daniel in 1995. Only 11 such institutions existed. By uh, 2011, there were almost 50 mega universities worldwide. Okay. And an example of, an open, uh, of a mega university is the University of Phoenix in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, perhaps uh, or arguably the most successful uh, open University in the United States. Okay. And of course, we have our UP Open University. It's the fifth constituent unit of the University of the Philippines system. It's UP Cyber Campus. Uh, and uh, we believe strongly that we pioneered in ICT for education. We've established a Faculty of Information and Communication Studies in 2004. Okay, and 100% of our courses are offered online. Also, as educators, we should be aware of uh, what is known as the Paris Message. In 2015, 
49 countries converged in Paris to deliver this so-called Paris message, uh, to agree first and then deliver. Part of the Paris message reads, we call on governments to recognize the important contribution of online open and flexible systems to meet the challenge of scale and quality in the provision of higher education and lifelong learning for the period 2015 to 2030. Consider that this was, uh, the Paris message was drafted the same month as uh, the release of the Sustainable Development Goals 2015-2030, which uh, has uh, as one of its major goals uh, lifelong uh, learning and education for all. The countries who participated in drafting the Paris message believed that uh, higher educational institutions will not be able to accommodate the uptake of uh, college enrollees uh, by 2030 or even the years uh, towards 2030. There will be a deficit of something like 30 million up, uh, or students who would want to take college. They will not be able uh, there are uh, educational institutions will not be able to accommodate them because of the lack of facilities, the lack of space. And this is the reason why we have to go online. We need to uh, explore or mainstream online open and flexible systems. Yes, ICT uh, is an offshoot of the information society. ICT meaning information and communication. So others say communications technology or technologies, information and communications technologies. Okay. It's a new generation uh, of technologies brought about by the merger of computers and telecommunications, okay. internet, the World Wide Web, and so on, uh, multimedia. Now, uh, in the late 90s, somebody felt that it should be applied uh, for uh, the development agenda, and so we have ICT4D. Uh, meaning information and communication technology for development. Okay. Uh, this was this movement originated in the World Bank, and eventually uh, UN agencies adopted it, such as UNESCAP and UNESCO. And uh, as a subcategory or a sub uh, field under ICT4D. ICT4E, Information and Communication Technology for Education. In the Philippines, uh, the pioneering uh, institution that went into this is FITED. Now, the UP Open University was quite uh, fortunate that uh, two of the, uh, FITED's thought leaders in uh, the early part of uh, the 21st century were actually part of our faculty. I'm referring, of course, to uh, Dr. Lodit Soplido, who introduced e-learning to uh, UPOU, and uh, Dr. Pat Arinto, who is uh, now the Dean of the Faculty of Education. Okay? Uh, at around the same time, the CICT was established by uh, the Philippine government. Now, how did ICT4E uh, get into the Philippine education scene since uh, the time of FITED? Uh, and CICT. Among the intentions of the basic education sector reform agenda in 2006 was to develop an ICT4E strategy for the Philippines. And there were a number of studies that were conducted uh, that led to this ICT4E strategy, uh, some of which assumed uh, the, these uh, propositions that ICT4E programs in the Philippines during that time tended to be technology-driven. Uh, ICT4E programs tended to be donor-driven, and uh, social realities necessitate the appropriate use of ICTs for education. Okay. Uh, then, uh, ICT4E had three functional areas. ICT for pedagogy. Okay. There was the DepEd computerization program, the DTI PCs for public schools project, iSchools, eSquela, community eCenters, okay. the ASEAN School Net, 
uh, consider this was from the period of 2004 to 2007, the APEC ICT model school project, and so on and so forth. There was systematic exploration of uh, the feasibility of e-learning for basic ed. Uh, which uh, was yet to be initiated. Uh, the next functional area was ICT for teacher development. Okay, there was the CHED uh, um, initiative on standards for ICT teacher competencies, I think which is part of this, uh, of this program that is developing this um, open educational resource. Intel's Teach to the Future, uh, Pit Ed's instructional design workshops, etc etc okay uh, the third functional area is ict for governance and management okay uh, deped then had a number of databases the basic education information system uh, and uh, others okay. now there were structural issues then uh, deped had no organizational readiness the current organizational structure of DepEd may not be very conducive to networking. Information and communication flows were stymied instead of flowing freely, horizontally, vertically, and radially. I understand that nowadays there is a move to improve this, uh, the internal communications within uh, DepEd. And the symptom was that there were too many channels for too much uh, paperwork. Uh, the organizational culture of uh, the department was uh, possibly averse to knowledge sharing and reuse. There were also political issues such as interfacing and uh, coordination uh, among the different uh, bureaus. Uh, one project would develop its own database, another project would develop its own database, and these databases do not communicate with one another. They cannot exchange uh, data, they cannot merge data. Okay. There are also programmatic issues. There is very little appreciation of primary, secondary, and tertiary impacts of ICTs in the developing, uh, development setting. Uh, what determines current ICT program design? It's uh, actually uh, assessment needs or uh, donor agendas. It's based on social agendas or technologies. Uh, the relevance and sustainability would be uh, enhanced if impetus for the project came from a real and felt need. Uh, the conclusion of these different studies then, among uh, these studies, were uh, one which was funded by uh, CIDS, the Center for Integrative and Development Studies, no? is that in spite of clear visioning among ICT4E advocates, pro uh, programs tend to be insensitive to social realities because of uh, the lack of proper appreciation of higher order impacts of ICTs, uh, donor agency, country agendas, industry agendas, uh, structural issues within DepEd. And there were a number of policy instruments that were uh, introduced uh, or proposed. Uh, the first one was defining the coverage of ICT to include uh, traditional media, not only those where uh, computers and uh, telecommunications merge. Another policy instrument was an appropriate use policy, okay. uh, the rationale of which was uh, that with the adoption of the above uh, definition, what follows is an appropriate use policy that sets efficient and effective utilization guidelines. Uh, the next policy instrument that was proposed then was donor coordination and harmonization and public-private sector partnerships. Now, uh, all of these uh, studies, uh, these policy options, uh, all contributed to an ICT 4E strategy of uh, the Department of Education, which will be one of the uh, uh, topics in a future session okay so I will end with my favorite poem you know, or stances uh, from a very old poem endless invention endless experiment brings knowledge of motion but not of stillness knowledge of speech but not of silence knowledge of words and ignorance of the word or all our knowledge brings us nearer to our ignorance all our ignorance brings us nearer to death but nearness to death, no nearer to God. Where is the life we have lost in living? Where is the wisdom we have lost in knowledge? Where is the knowledge we have lost in information? 
the cycles of heaven in 20 centuries brings us nearer or farther from God and nearer to the dust. T.S. Eliot, a poem which he wrote in 1934, uh, The Rock. Okay, where is the wisdom we have lost in knowledge? Where is the knowledge we have lost in information? Uh, we hope that the educational sector will not be asking these questions to itself. Thank you very much.